Um, that is a valid question. Why would anybody choose to be born at, to enter into some sort of terrible torture, etc.? Um, so it's really uh, sometimes I'm going to say sometimes they're not choosing that. They're put there. They're assigned there by their own teachers and guides, who um, who make them. Yes. Um, who make them have a life. So, but why? The question would be why? Um, when, when you have, um, if you go back through time, um, in China, in Rome, in Eastern Europe, in some of the South American civilizations, um, there were groups of people from time to time who just got into terrible torture. Um, the viciousness. Uh, I think one of the things I've mentioned was Count Dracula, who was at Vlad Dracula, was um, known for uh, capturing enemy soldiers and then impaling them on a, you know, pointed stick outside the city, and he would, you know, part the guy's legs and just jam the guy so the stick went right up through the body, and and they died right there. Um, impaled on this, uh, I don't know, this stick um, or post, that kind of thing. The Romans had torture chambers that they used a lot and uh, just awful kinds of things, pulling people apart. Um, the, uh, there have been uh, in the church uh, groups that ebb and flow, it ebbs and flows, but groups of priests and Ancient nuns who had were involved in child sacrifice. There, it's it's all over. It's all over. Um, the um, so you, so what you end up with. Let's not spend too much time on the ugly torture part. But what you end up with are groups of people who um, have been very very cruel, and who then end up saying. I need to somehow make up for that. I or they, they end up coming back. They see there. Usually, these are people who are very interested in money, power, that kind of thing. So they are shown a family that's very wealthy, very powerful, very comfortable, and they choose to go there. And and uh, boom, they're in a family that practices Satanism. Or uh, they come in and they they literally choose the torture themselves. It's not because they want to do that. It's because they know several things. One, the child is going to feel, but they're not going to remember it too much. They're not going to suffer too much. A child dies quickly, um, and they want to. They're they're doing karmic service. They, um, so they come in and I can't, you know, I've seen this and thought, oh, wow. Um, but they come in and they know the life is very short. They're only going to suffer a little bit. So they, they say, okay, I'm going to come in, do my time and it's going to be over quickly. And then there's others who come in as kind of a missionary, uh, attitude. And that is that they, uh, how do I explain? Explain this. Um, they want to be uh, part of this effort that shows the greater population, look what's going on. And so they'll sign up for that kind of thing in, in order for it to be enough people to say, oh my God, this is too much. This, is, you know, when there's enough child sacrifice going on, it's really hard to keep it hidden. It's hard to keep it in the dark corners. It's hard to keep it underground, which a lot of it is happening underground. Um, and and so it begins to leak out. And when it does, it has a shock effect on the population that's watching, and that's what they're after. Those people are wanting to wake up people. So they come in and they volunteer for this very short mission, which is very painful, very shocking, and uh, may have some trauma. Usually, a lot of them don't survive. Um, so there's that. 
okay the the fact that sometimes you get a sign somewhere and you haven't been shown the whole picture um that you are willingly coming because you are doing karma what you call payback or you're wanting to experience something in order to never do that again if you were a torturer and you come back and you get tortured you're typically not going to do that again okay and then there's the ones who want to wake up the greater population who say i'll volunteer for that and i'm like oh i i couldn't do it I, that that's not me so um there's that and then the um i think the that was another thing i was going to say i've seen so many things about this um whole thing let's see the question actually triggered that so when you come in and you have a uh, life as a child in which you're raped 100 150 times and then finally left for dead or just you know killed outright um or you're used for adrenochrome torture 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 and and then finally you um you don't have any blood left they take out too much blood and you just die so um that kind of of thing um it, it makes you, um, it awakens you to the deeper compassion within yourself. There's soul growth in there. It's a hard one. I would rather go at it the slow way than that. <laughs> but it's, it does make you very, very um, significantly aware um, in the following lives. I think it's not, I think it's too much. You know, and then there's uh, there's also people who just get trapped in it, um, who are not aware, et cetera, or who just, um, they come in to loving parents and parents turn out to have some pretty awful habits that they keep undercover. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it, that's a tough question tough thing to answer and right now we're having just a massive number of children that have uh, you know that have become part of this uh, kidnapping by coyotes they're called coyotes who go around and, and look for children you post kids pictures on Facebook they come around and say where are those kids playing and they're on what pick them up and away they go the other thing that um, <coughs> And I'm not sure what I could say about this that would be redeeming. I don't think anything. But in some of the underground bases, there's been a lot of genetic experimentation going on. And the um, attempt, when I've tuned in, the attempt appeared to have been, can we create something with blood in it that maybe isn't quite human and that won't we don't have to feel bad about its suffering. So it's like oh, a little bit of an attempt to reduce suffering, to increase the blood supply, and uh, but you end up with these um, half-human looking things that are uh, I'm just like, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of, of uh, Will cry and, and complain about just a few stem cell research things going on. And then you look at some of the stuff that's going on in the hidden labs and the hidden um, bunkers and dumps below the surface of the earth, and you're like, you know, where do these guys get off saying anything? There's a lot of experimentation going on. And so it's, uh, it, right now, it, the amount of, of, uh, of uh, the suffering on the planet, coming off the planet, being heard and felt by others around the planet is a lot. It's a lot. And um, the, some of the attitude of some of those beings is not good. Um, their attitude is you deserve to die. Uh, meaning us, because we're not doing anything about that. So... That might be too rough to hear. You know, if you want to take that out, you can, but that's the truth. But there are also some of those 
that are that have heard the cry of energy that is very strong and very um, hurtful right now that say that they actually want to help. I keep hoping they'll help. If we can get a few more people to care, to be willing to look at what's happening and to care and to, you know, what happens, what happened for me was just this crying out, somebody please help. So we could all do that. We could all um, send that energy out for help. Not ha yeah. for those people, not necessarily to have someone, a savior come and help us, but to say that we're, we're, we're going to try to change. Right. Right. We're, we're open. You know, <laughs> we're open to help. So just a small thing I would like to clarify about karma is that when you said that some people who have been torturers come back as being tortured, it's actually a choice to come back because karma, there's no really such a thing as karma. You see, because when you die, is there like a moment you say, oh my God, what was I doing? Is, is that how it happens? I, and I choose to come back to do the other way. There's not, we can't say, look at those children and say, well, you're coming back because you're paying for it. Do you, uh, do you understand my question? It's not about that. Yeah. Um, the, the karma thing is, you know, it's the best way to explain it, but it's maybe not the, the most accurate representation because when somebody dies and they've been a murderer or they've been a child torture or engaged in child sacrifice or raping or whatever, um, there's a point. I, I mean, when you die, you're really, there's, there's just so many things that could happen. Let's say you go to the, the way station. You'll be there for a while. You'll have to heal a little bit because somebody who's willing to do those kinds of things is considered sick, really sick. And so they have to change. They, and so they do change. But then um, they, they get assigned to some kind of work in the city. The way station is a very very large place um, and they um, how do I say after a couple of years um, they they attend meetings they attend group meetings they attend events and there's a lot of spiritual stuff that's happened or that happens there a lot of um, talk it's really run by people who are very aware and so spiritual and so advanced so you know there's a lot of teaching a lot of teaching that goes on at the way station for those who have been something bad we'll just leave it at bad in in their previous life and there comes there's this encouragement to how are you going to correct that how are you going to, what are you going to do to make the world a better place? So then eventually the person says, okay, I'm willing to go and do something to make the world a better place. Well, the first step is that you go to school, you go back to this, uh, it's a period almost of isolation where you study the life you just had in great detail. And here's the issue. That's when you begin to experience what you did from a little bit of an awakened point of view. And you suffer through that. You have to watch what you did all the way through that. And, and it's painful. And then you answer, then that's the first, we'll say that's your high school education over there. And then you get out of high school and you join this group, which I've talked about before, and you do some um, conversations about if I went back, I would, I would want to do this. I would want to do that. And so you talk to within this group that you're going to work with, that somebody's going to be the mother, somebody's going to be the father, somebody's going to be your teacher, somebody's the grandmother, um, a, you know, a significant other who influences you, a boss, a lover. So you're working with this group of people and you have your teachers and your counselors that guide that group. Then you go away to find, um, you know, pretty much have figured out this is what I think I would like to do. And you try to find something that will set that up for you 
and then you get that approved by the counselor and then you come back and you are inserted into a fetus in which that you have chosen but you haven't seen all of the details number one and even if you have seen all the details the most common response is i can rise above that i can be above that i can fix that i'm not going to succumb to that again i'm going to understand and then you get here you don't remember one damn thing you get hooked all over again and you're right back in it or you end up in something that you didn't see coming and you're broadsided by that you know that experience and that you that's when you can get people who uh, you know the plan didn't go as planned and then you have this massive experience that changes you at the core and when you get back then you need healing again when you, you go back to the way station okay so that's the whole way station cycle if you don't go to the way station you're going to be drawn to a level of function that matches the life you just had and that's very different and when i say that there are hell worlds out there i'm not fooling there are places that you can get drawn to or that you can get sucked into or that you wander into and they and it may take a long time before you have a moment in which you when in which you look around and, and say how did i get here how did i get involved in this how did etc the very thing you needed to ask here in the midst of a whole bunch of child sacrifice people who are pretending this is all normal if we can get away with it we can get away with it um that very question of how did i get here how how do i get out of this um, that's the question that has to happen but a long time can go by and in some of those worlds you don't have a very clear sense of past present and future so it's like you've always been in that and you always will be it's um the the i have to say um you do want to work on yourself and raise your consciousness so that you can move into if you don't go to the way station if you don't go with family or friends at the time of the death or you nobody shows up which almost always somebody will show up and say come with me um if you end up not going to the way station you're going to have to make your way in and the levels of uh, of existence are you're going to be drawn into whatever is most common most normal for you whatever unresolved things you have you are carrying or whatever tendencies um watch out um and and let me say i you know i'm trying to scare you a little bit because that is the way it is and i would not want to see anybody get stuck in those some of those realms for even a minute not even a minute and i've been in a number of them one that was really bad and others that were nightmarish just a continuous nightmare so um just do some work on yourself look around look inside and ask who am i what am i doing here what could i become how can i make the world a better place how do I get out of what I got myself into? If you are smart enough to get yourself into it, you're smart enough to work your way out of it. Maybe it's not going to happen overnight, but by gosh, if you even show a little sign of wanting to evolve yourself, there's help out there. The universe is is gonna the universe will meet you halfway, more than halfway. So <sighs> it's worth it even just to do a little bit of work just do it would, would the new earth be one of those places 
So if we die, something happens, a catastrophe, if we've worked on ourselves and worked on the world we'd like to create, is that the same right. idea that when we pass on, one of the worlds that we could go into is a yes. type of earth here, but like a, another version of it? Yeah, I've encouraged people to sit right down and daydream about the, you know, the ideal world. Um, what would that look like? What color is the soil? Are there trees? How tall? What kind? Um, who's there? Do you have a house? Is there food? Is there music? Is there dancing? Is there what? What's there? Just imagine it. You do, people do not understand how powerful the creative mode in humans is. When I say every thought creates, I mean it. Why not create a world for yourself that you can move into? and enjoy once you get there you can always expand it one last small question that came to me when you said okay a soul chooses to, there's a lot more questions but let me just add this because it was something that came yeah. up at the moment where you you said that a, a soul chooses uh to incarnate in in into this situation of uh, of torture and that there's a lot happening right now so isn't yeah. there a moment where everybody that is willing to incarnate said no and that nobody would incarnate, would be willing to incarnate into those positions. Could that happen? That there's like a mass revolution in the incarnational <laughs> cycle that says, no more, we're not going, doing this anymore. Yeah. Well, theoretically, yes, it was, it's possible. Um, the fact that you and I, and let's say everybody says, no, I'm not going to incarnate if that's what, what I have to face. There's still people that are willing to be cruel who will then victimize others? Um, it's uh, it's you. You can say I'm not going there. I'm not doing that. But that's just you. Here's the rule: you have to save yourself. That's why I say to people: take care of yourself first. It's to get them in the habit of thinking about themselves and about what's happening with them and to recognize themselves, to become self-recognizing and self-generating and self-regenerating. That's really what it's about. And that's really where I want people to go. Um, and, and you don't go there if somebody's not saying, hey, take care of yourself first. First, think about you. We are all taught to think about everybody but ourselves. That is the most damaging psychological approach to the development of any being that, that you can possibly come up with because it negates the existence of the self. And then 99% of the parents never really give permission emotionally, mentally, verbally, or physically through their actions to that child to exist. They don't know how to do that. Permission to exist has to be given. And if you didn't get it from your parents, you have to give it to yourself. You have to learn how to give it to yourself gently, kindly, and in a way that allows you to grow. And unfold your beauty and your gifts and your amazing intelligence. It's about unfolding the whole human potential. Right now, it's folding up. It's like, ah, come on, come on, come on. Other way, the other direction. Take care of yourself first. That's so important. Yeah. So if we bring it back to our current state of what we talked about previously to say, that people feel often very overwhelmed of what to do. And you spoke a little bit about, you know, every day, taking 10 minutes a day to think of what would you like to create? So that goes into that same idea, is that that works on your right. consciousness. Even if you feel you're not doing very much, it does make a change. Yeah. Okay. And to add to that is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of new age terms out there. And one of them is, um, that the people that are the cabal and the powers that be are service to self, whereas everybody else who has a good heart will be service to others. Now, I understand what they're trying to, trying to say by that, but there's also, um, I feel sometimes that there's a bit of a mind twist that happens that That's right. I, I think there should be another, another way of looking at this. So can you say yeah. anything about that? 
Yeah, because when you take care of yourself first, there comes a point at which you're ready, willing, and able to help others. If you even, you know, let me draw on the Bible, which I've kind of said that's such an outdated thing, but it's got some good stuff in it. Um, there's a, some talk in there about the blind leading the blind. If you're, if you just don't have yourself together, you don't have permission to exist, you haven't figured out yourself, you can't help very many others. So to say that some of the elites or the, the, corrupt ones are all service to self yeah they are and it's a very damaged self that's not what i'm talking about so to say that first you recognize yourself first you take care of yourself so that you can begin to give your gifts to others to the world to make the world a better place that's a different premise if the service to self stops at self and never goes out to help anybody else then that's not service to self that's greed that's uh narcissism that's psychopathic that's sociopathic that's personality disorders um it's twisted just like you said the test of of the outcome is really in once you've taken care of yourself and you know you're it's it's the old saying of put on your own oxygen mask first and then you can help a few others um the test is whether or not you're going to turn around and do anything for anybody else that's um that's really where it's at now you could say well those guys that are in the corruption they're helping one another but it's not good. I mean, you just can look at it and say that, <laughs> that isn't really valid. That's not a valid argument because what they're doing is a terrible kind of approach. It's a terrible um, treatment of others. They're creating fear. They're creating violence. They're creating harm. They're hurting people. Um, where's the improvement in the world? It isn't. There isn't. So civilization comes together, everybody contributes their consciousness, um, and that is what makes the, the civilization stable or unstable. And we've had some civilizations on this planet that have not survived. So here we are. We have a choice. We do have a choice. And we're making that choice right now every day with our willingness to um, to take a stand for ourselves to look at what's happening in the world to um, do something for ourselves that will maybe make the world a better place etc i mean right now it's uh wow <laughs> okay uh, all of the everything I can think of saying just seems so pale compared to the magnitude of the choice that we're up against which the choice is either we're going to um, move our consciousness um, into a more expansive more loving space or we're not And I don't think that any of those people that are practicing child sacrifice or raping children or um, young girls or young boys, I don't think that they are creating a world of love, that they don't have that consciousness. It's a world of power. It's a world of greed. It's a world of pain. It's an awful world. And it's going to implode. And we're in it. So we have a choice. And I think that's going to unfold over the next year. And it's going to become clear. A lot to think about. I don't know. Yeah. It gives a lot to think about. But you entered a, a few things in there that could make people think. And again, it's not about just here. It's about after also what happens after. And that I think is so yeah. important for people to realize that there's more than just yeah. 
So, yeah. So, and that's uh, very difficult. We get very stuck in our little Trump, 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 but it's not just about Trump. You know, it's, it's, no, it's not. He's just one man that's trying to wake people up to say, hey, he's standing right there saying, this is not the world I want to live in. I want a different kind of world. I want a world that works for all. This ain't working. So it's really not working for anybody. And a lot of people are fooling themselves and they're holding this, you know, oh, they're holding the line, hoping that it'll get better, watching it go downhill. As Trump has to have people who he knows are behind him. If he doesn't have that, he can't accomplish anything. We have to be with him. We have to be with that energy of love. And, and I'm not talking about personality here. I'm not talking about romantic anything. I'm talking about real love. Real love is an honest response, a healthy response to what you see and hear and feel, etc. If you if you don't have any love, what have you got? You got a nightmare. So Trump is trying to wake us up from the nightmare. 